Bene, allora io comincerei con una citazione, se mi consentite, abbastanza breve, da una raccolta di eh, saggi curata da Mark Lamster che si chiama Architecture and Film. Uh, the architect and the filmmaker have much in common. Their professions demand a combination of courage, determination and hubris that allow them to impose a personal vision on an often unreceptive world. Both practice synthetic arts where collaboration and compromise are rules rather than, rather than exceptions and where clients have financial, if not creative, control. Orchestrators of complex productions, they require a supporting cast of able craftsmen who must carry out their tasks with creativity, intelligence, and practicality. If they don't, if a, pro if a project fails to live up uh, to expectations, the principal alone will take the blame. Conversely, it is the heroic auteur who will bask in the adulation of any grand success, the role players fading quietly into the penumbra. Ecco, uh, uh, mi sembra già una uh, buona introduzione per uh, uh, impostare <coughs> ciò che lega, almeno le basi di ciò che lega uh, uh, le due professioni. Il rapporto cinema-architettura è innegabile e a maggior ragione ancora più innegabile è il rapporto fra città e cinema, uh, uh, di cui probabilmente parleremo in particolare, credo, oggi. Ed è un rapporto non occasionale, eh, eh, nel senso che, eh, non so, a mio avviso lo stesso neorealismo italiano eh, eh, sviluppa questa relazione, il rapporto eh, città, cinema e, e spazio, eh, molto coscientemente, eh, eh, molto al di là di quelle che si credono essere le, così, le, 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 eh, i valori immediati, eh, in qualche misura addirittura ingenui eh, di, quella, di quella tradizione. Non parliamo poi dell'espressionismo naturalmente tedesco, ecco. Però partirei da uh, uh, una notazione che è un po' storica ma è anche in qualche misura teorica di un grande critico di Krakow, eh, uh, il quale uh, dice che nel rapporto cinema-città, lui non dice architettura, dice città, uh, uh, si occupa, almeno inizialmente, si occupa molto nel cinema l'avanguardia. Uh, Ruttmann, uh, Giga Vyatov, uh, quell'avanguardia. E mostra, uh, uh, questa avanguardia, mostra una sorta di schizofrenia fra il desiderio, dice Krakawa, il desiderio di celebrare la rivoluzione percettiva della modernità urbana e la sensazione angosciante della vuotezza uh, e della alienazione dell'esperienza metropolitana. Già mi pare questa chiamiamo la definizione, copra una buona fetta di, del cinema dello stesso Wenders, a, a mio modesto avviso. Ora, secondo il canone tradizionale, la lettura tradizionale, sta all'architettura cambiare eh, questo spazio, conformandolo a termini più umani, come si dice, e sta al cinema descrivere, evidenziare e magari denunciare le sue mancanze. Ma se il cinema, e qui concludo, eh, ma se il cinema tanto ha in comune con l'architettura, mi chiedo, non potrebbe avere una parte più attiva nell'eventuale processo di cambiamento? E se sì, quale parte? It seems to me that the cities that we know, the big contemporary cities, were born about the same time as cinema. By the end of the 19th century. And it seems to me that two fantastic inventions sort of made them both happen. Two inventions with wheels in them. I think cinema needed the invention of the camera and that was invented in several places in America and France and also in Germany. And you had to turn it. And it was a fantastic little mechanical invention. And the cities, actually, the cities that we know were only possible after the invention of the elevator. Without the elevator, we wouldn't have our modern cities. Nobody would walk up 
10, 20, 40 floors without elevators. So it was just, what's his name? Kalamov, no, Ashinsori. Ashinsori, what's the name of the inventor? Um, ah, no, yes, uh, Schling, Schlinder, no? Yeah, there's Schindler. a... Schindler. Schindler. Schindler, but there's also an American, an American. inventor. No, no, no. Otis, no. yes, Otis. Otis. Exactly. Schindler. With Otis's invention, you could start building New York, not before. And if you look at elevators, this little box with the, with the big wheels pulling it up, and you, if you look at a camera, which is also a little box, except you put something else into it, you don't put people into it, you put images of people into it. I think these two inventions, about the same time, made cinema and movies happen. And ever since, I think, these two sort of pre propulsed, propulsed each other. I think cinema is the most important invention for people who lived in cities. I don't think any country population would have needed cinema. Maybe in, maybe in Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> but the cinema furnished all, all the imagination that people needed in these cities. I think it's enough for a beginning. I think I'll let you speak for a while. Uh, no, the beginning is a, is a fantastic beginning. I think it's a... But uh, my beginning is that we, we do exactly something very different because you try to have people sit and cannot move in front of, a bill, of, of your screen and the screen is moving. And I want that people move in my building. My people move a lot. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, sometimes. No, no, not yesterday. Yes, it was a little bit, uh, was quite good. <laughs> but I think this is a, you, your purpose, purpose is that people have not to move too much. And we want that uh, people move in our building. This is my first, uh, first idea in this way. But the second one was the, the movie, I don't know if you remember, well, it's what Fontenade, Fontenade by Gary Cooper. Uh, you, you remember that was it's a really a mythos for each architect in the world. If you remember the movies, it was uh, was uh, something like an apology, was a metaphor with the Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, yes. and then he wanted yes, was the towers, was an architect, La Fonte, La Fonte Meravigliosa, Fontenay, Fontenay, and there was uh, Gary Cooper was a fantastic architect, very tall, nice, beautiful. I did fantastic uh, towers, and uh, the client, the producer, the producer, want to put the money, want to put on the top, on the roof, some, some, something that looks like uh, uh, Gothic or something like a Renaissance, a new Renaissance or something on the top, like a hat. <laughs> Many artists want to have a hat, but this he want. And then what he, uh, he said, I don't want to do my building anymore. I go away, and after uh, they build without the architect. And what he did, he destroyed with the bomb. And was beautifully made, that uh, he was uh, really in this way, he did, was a little bit ill, was there, boof, the building was completely dis disappeared. This is uh, the mythos of an architect and the film. What is, uh, how much is wrong, the money, how much is good, the idea, the creation, this. But uh, we can say the third thing, uh, that is no more immediate, but is, uh, you can use a cinema in two ways. First, the first is that you have a cinema can be, uh, you can, can use architecture like a stage. This can be, it's easy. It's like a publicity spot, something like this. Or architects can use it, uh, cinema. So I think that I am using cinema because of from uh, perhaps in the last meeting that we had uh, three or four years ago together about the same things I, I, I said. I think that after the interview uh, Truffaut uh, to Hitchcock, 
I changed my architecture. Because I understood something that was uh, what is editing, uh, what is to think uh, the piece of the building, like editing, before, like Hiko said always, uh, you, I don't want to do so much. I don't want to make a tournage or a lot of, uh, of films because I, I want to have a really economic uh, editing from the beginning. In my mind, in my concept, I have to have all the editing and after I don't want to give it to another people to make editing in which way you want. Then I think I try to do architecture in this way. For me, architecture is, uh, what was interesting for me yesterday was uh, two or three things that uh, I keep from uh, see, uh, what, uh, what uh, the change of light very fast. There are a few images with the change of light. This is nice. I can bring home. There is another one is when the camera change, you see, you, you come inside and the camera is up, I see the people that is in the reception of the hotel. And this I like because I do this. This is uh, some, uh, some shortcuts that I use every day. I change the horizon, I move there, and I want the people can see this, and after I go away in another place. This is the other ways to use a cinema. It's all. But then when you, when you build your building, people will have to live in it, right? Yeah, also when you do your film, uh, you are a responsibility. You are speaking about your responsibility, I think, yes. I suppose. But you too, you have a responsibility. Actually, I, sometimes I feel that's the closest thing we, do, we have in common. That you, you put this building up and then people spend their lives in there and they walk around these buildings. Maybe they don't e exactly live in it, but it's part of their lives and they walk around in it. And I sometimes think of my films a little bit like that. People have to inhabit them, inhibit them. They have to start living in them and they have to start using them because otherwise my movies don't exist and your buildings don't exist if people don't use them. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was a little, uh, I wasn't all, I didn't agree when you said my people sit in front of the movies and mm -hmm. see the screen because then they leave the cinema and that's when my movie starts. It continues when people take it with them and in a way, I think of films not as something that is just there when it's on the screen, but it's something that continues to live, like architecture continues to live with people. Actually, I, I'm happy if people move out of my movie. <laughs> if they take it, I mean, if they take it with them. I had only one idea when I, <laughs> I only had one idea when I tried to prepare myself for a talk. But sometimes one idea is enough. Like in a movie, one idea might be enough. And for a building, I think, as well. One idea. One idea is enough. No exactly. more. No more. So one idea for today, as far as I'm concerned. It has to be enough because I don't have two. Um, <laughs> because I, I started to think of what you do and what I do um, a little bit more abstractly in terms of space and time and we both deal with space and time but each in our own way and then I realized there was something very interesting that architects do have in common with filmmakers because thinking of along the lines of what I do with space and time and what you do with space and time. Um, I, I had one thought, which is that it's always that my favorite movies, not my own, but films that I see, the favorite kind of cinema for me is the one where I just sit and I watch it and I can, and it provokes me to dream a little bit and I don't have to always be completely with the movie. I can also 
sort of start seeing my own film at the same time. So the film gives me some space in between its images. So it, it leaves holes, so to speak. It's, and it reminds me of my, of my imagination and my, the beginning of my creativity when I was a kid and I was reading books. And I read a lot of books. And with the books, it was the same. There was the words written on the paper. But there was all the space between the lines. And the actual fun of reading was to read everything that was not written, to sort of imagine myself into these words and to fill the space between the lines myself. And I later thought maybe movies work the same, and I, do, I think they do work the same. As if you're allowed as a viewer to sort of see also the space between the images, and if the film leaves you all that room like to dream yourself into it, then you can really start using it. Mm -hmm. A lot of films today are made in a way that is all that is all so tight and all the images fit so tightly and it's so loud, you have no space to dream yourself. And that's what I like in buildings as well. If they leave sort of the holes, the, 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 the white between the lines, so to speak, if they leave air, and like for a filmmaker, sometimes the most important thing is what we don't show. I also think for architects, the most important thing is where you don't build or where you leave something open and empty. I think sometimes great architecture is the space that is not built, but it, that is left empty. Uh, it's a perfect uh, thing that uh, it's a week. We call this in between. Yeah. Uh, in between is one of the world that we discovered in the 80s. It was very important. In the 80s, we discovered a few things very inter interesting. But one is in between. What is fantastic is not the shape of the building. I am, I, I am completely agree. I am agree. But it is the distance between one building to another. I, I remember the tower that I built in Vienna. What it was important for me was not the monolite. Monolite came from Kubrick, very easy. But was where you have to put uh, the distance between. The distance between is exactly 4 meters 75 centimeters. I don't know why, but it's OK. It works. But it was uh, the, the empty spot, the void. Because if you, uh, why I don't like uh, the, the movie, American movie today, I tell you honestly. Because uh, American movie is. Uh, uh, so dense, uh, is so uh, the, the concept of space time is died, but it's not died because it's the end of the space of time. Because we have internet, we have modernity, contemporary. It's died because they have not uh, the music of the film. The music of the film is fantastic. The, the music is that uh, something that uh, we call this uh, in Italy was uh, intervallo nota. It's something of, uh, we did in the 60s was uh, speaking about intervallo nota. I, I cannot say the, the translation. But it's when you are one, one black, one whole, one nothing, and after change, it, they're up to something. This is, uh, I think, I agree. But uh, w what is uh, about space and time? I am very, very interested because uh, I, I try to to work without any more space and time. But I don't want eliminated the, the, the between, the void. I think the architecture and the cinema, they, they work with the void much more than a plane. And, but it, it's so, I think a space was destroyed, I think, uh, with, the, with the concept of uh, uh, internet and uh, also evolution, uh, informatic evolution, uh, digital, uh, also the time. Uh, uh, Virio tried, uh, he was speaking about acceleration. You remember acceleration on the process, all the process was accelerated. I think that, that now I think we have no more space time, and for that we have no more speedness. It's absurd. We live, uh, we don't move. We have no space, no time. And no speedness because space and time is a speedness. It is a fantastic. But uh, I think also cinema can can work around this team. Uh, it is working about this team. It is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, sì, è abbastanza facile fare il moderatore, sono magnifici oratori, no? sto qua a ascoltare eh, ammirato. Ecco, c'è una cosa però, eh, parlo in italiano perché mi ha detto di parlare in italiano, eh, ehm, c'è una cosa però che volevo chiedere tornando un po' indietro rispetto alla discussione. Eh, ambedue i nostri ospiti concordano che come dire, si tratta sempre di abitare, per l'architettura evidentemente, di abitare lo spazio, per il cinema di abitare il film, <coughs> eh, senza alcun dubbio. Uh, uh, si tratta cioè come dire, di, di, di persone che si muovono, dice eh, il Fuxas, che si muovono nello spazio e in qualche misura anche, sia pure idealmente, che si muovono, cioè che sono a loro agio, diciamo, nel okay. film per quello che riguarda il cinema. E, mh, mi viene una domanda, uh, forse anche in Genova, in Genova non so, ma uh, è sicuramente vero che per un film, uh, come dire, è possibile una, due, sono possibili una, due, tre, quattro letture, interpretazioni. Voglio dire, per me, personalmente, individualmente, spettatore, quel film dice, parla in un certo modo, mi dice alcune cose, mentre per un altro ne dice altre, o, o quantomeno le cose che dice a me non le dice a lui o lei. Cioè, in altre parole, non c'è un modo univoco di abitare il film, questo intendo dire. Mi chiedo eh, eh, se... La cosa vale e probabilmente vale anche per uh, l'architettura. I don't, I don't want to, to, to be a, a boring because uh, this kind of we can do very easily bo to boring. But um, I think that uh, uh, sorry if I speak about Derrida, but uh, I cannot. The, because he was working about uh, the concept of interpretation. interpretation. And, uh, and they make the, the cost the construction, the construction of uh, interpretation. I think uh, the, it, is, uh, it is very important to give to interpretation the, what is the really, the, what he's doing. I think uh, uh, the, 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 there, are, the, there is a, a philosophy about interpretation. Uh, it is not so easy to, to make this uh, scientific, of course, uh, for that is uh, more uh, in the field of philosophy. But uh, is what uh, we need. When we have uh, this artwork, we call this, all this is artwork, music, what you want. Uh, it's interpretation. I think that uh, uh, there is not one interpretation. Can be successful because every people love, but they give different interpretation. And then uh, I think that this is uh, what we want, to have a different interpretation of, of, of our work. Uh, but also, I think we do. I was speaking always about uh, something uh, is also the concept of ethic. Of yes. uh, ethics. Ethics. Ethics, yes. ethics is, uh, is something that is, uh, is very important. But not always. Sometime in the history, in the life, uh, it's important that we are sorry, <laughs> that we are speaking about uh, ethics. I think. Uh, uh, our uh, an artist uh, creator, some people that are doing hard work, uh, he has a responsibility. Responsibility, but it's more ethic. What is ethic? It is not at all moralism. Ethics. It is only when you uh, when you ask to yourself why you are doing this, if it's really necessary. And uh, sometimes you have to ask, what are you doing? And this, I think, uh, we, are, we are very happy because in our, uh, we can, uh, the, socia the society give us uh, money to live, uh, to a car, we are eating, we are quite good, people love us sometimes, but we have to give something back. And our work is to give back something. It's a... Uh, uh, This, as I think, is ethics. Uh, we have uh, not to find solution, because uh, we cannot find solution. But we, we can be critic of a society in which we live. And for that, I think the best interpretation is the critic. And this uh, is what is in mind. 
Sì, io ho usato la parola interpretazione, ma eh, in realtà è semplicemente un modo, è ancora eh, qualcosa di meno. È molto dura la parola interpretazione, eh, è terribile. È terribile, sì, è vero. È, è, no, no, è proprio il, il modo in cui tu percepisci certe cose, un, un film per esempio, no? Eh, perché quella scena, quell'immagine, quello sguardo mi commuove, faccio per dire. Vabbè, non è un'interpretazione, non è un'interpretazione, è qualcosa che io sento semplicemente. Ecco. E, 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 ed è probabile, come dicevo, che anche in architettura, anche nel, nella sì. costruzione e nella percezione, lo spazio avvenga la stessa cosa eh, immagino no without if you have a, the, the problem of our works is uh, my works is that it's not uh, enough to do only build it works with the people up inside what really is important in my work is to give uh, an emotion uh, to give an experience before and after to give an emotion and finally is the emotion what is the most important And the emotion, I hope that the emotion is positive, and also the experience is positive experience. When they, uh, they leave my seat, mm -hmm. like your people. It's still interesting to sort of try to figure out how you invest that emotion as an architecture. Because as a filmmaker, I know really well how we invest it. So if the audience is moved, and even if everybody's interpretation is different, but you can make an emotional suggestion and then some people can react emotionally. They don't have to, but others can react very emotionally. I saw that yesterday. I mean, how open it is. I saw my, f my own film last night at the Piazza Grande with very different eyes. I saw a movie that I didn't quite know yet it was amazing how it worked for me and and i felt that people were moved by things that had been lost in other screenings and other things that i always thought would would work really emotionally didn't work it was amazing and but i know how emotions translate because in a film You have to invest with the actors, with your writer, with your cameraman, with the light, with the cadrage, with the framing. I mean, you have to make a, an emotional suggestion. And if you don't have the emotion yourself, nobody will get it. And that's why sometimes I, I'm so appalled in many, especially, I mean, American movies, because they're suggesting emotions that they didn't have themselves. They constructed them, but they didn't have them. And then I cannot have them myself. But how do you deal as an architect with the concept of emotion? I mean, what is it that you are investing? But it is exactly the same. Exactly, exactly the same. What do we do? I, uh, it's like, uh, I don't, uh, I think, I have a without, I don't see. I, I am thinking uh, quite always uh, about seven o'clock in the morning when I am in my bed, I see, I look at the, the, what I have to do. And I see the light that came from one staircase. I need a staircase, it is not enough. I need a two. One go there, yes, well, I need a light there. Uh, I, I do always, I use always three lights. Uh, one direct light, one is indirect light, uh, one is what I call Uh, magic light that uh, no, nobody can see where come but can change uh, some things and after I have my actors actors is uh, people that are on my stage the stage is uh, the the building the city and they are the actors they have they have to move I have to think in which way they can move inside to have the perception of this and after is no finish i have to change one quality of the material. I don't like a material that have no vibration, they have no inspiration. I don't like a material that like this. This is nothing. For me, it's no. I like materia, like materia povera, arte povera, uh, Boetti and, uh, and Merz, my friend Merz has died, uh, it's a pity. And after, when we do, uh, I am doing a building, I, I tell you, in a, in a in, in, in uh, Torino, in Porta Palazzo. Porta Palazzo is a multi-ethnic quarter in the middle of town. And uh, what, uh, there is a friend of mine that make a, a video, a small, a short video about this. And then what was important was what they can see from uh, the, the, the tramway, and uh, what the people can see from inside to the tramway where is the reflection of my building on the tramway. 
And this is exactly what I want. I don't want anything more. And why? Because this vibration that is superposing the, the glass and after all everything's make it try to be. And after you come inside, I don't make always the, the people cannot see all. I want them to see a piece and after they go around and after they go down, down there is no much light. I say this is a hole, this is good. And after they move, it's exactly the same. I have. I have a camera, I said to the camera, please uh, shoot this. <laughs> and after, uh, no, shoot another thing. But it, it's exactly, but we, we learn this from a cinema. Why architecture is now, uh, many architects are always very, very in love for cinema. Because uh, the good architects understood, uh, they have uh, understood from cinema what can change of architecture. Architecture before was static, Boring, uh, you can have uh, the Fagos office in Ogrobus, so you have uh, one picture, fantastic building, the corner, and this was all. Now I think that you need or, or millions of or, or pictures, or you make a film, then you can understand better architecture. And you understand better architecture with the film, and you understand better architecture, a city with the film. And without film, you cannot uh, appreciate Tokyo or New York, o something else. A questo punto mi sento di fare un'altra domanda, eh, ehm, prendendo spunto da un film particolare, eh, molto noto fra l'altro, che è The Phantom Menace dei Guerra Stellari. Ecco, eh, in quel film il palazzo cosiddetto in Mabu, eh, eh, le scene sono girate nella regia di Caserta. In altre parole, il futuro da un lato, o il futuribile se preferite da un lato, e eh, Van Vitelli dall'altro. Eh, eh, una sorta di originalità hollywoodiana si potrebbe pensare Las pure? Las o la svegasiana sì, cioè, ah, sì, sì, giusto e questo forse dico, potrebbe farci pensare a, a che rapporto si instaura fra passato e presente anche a quel livello, non solo ai grandi livelli di creazione gli architetti degli anni 80 sono stati molto influenzati dal primo, dal primo guerre stellari che dava un'immagine di, 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 così, di modernità, ecco, era, era il superamento di una visione statica ma era una visione moderna. Ma io credo che per parlare di un film, di un altro film di fantascienza, Odissea nello spazio ha un grado di, non ha bisogno di, fare, di usare uno stage esistente e storico But they use concept completely different. He destroyed the horizontal uh, plane, uh, il piano orizzontale. When the people are moving in this space, are going through, I go, the, mm. you have no more, uh, you have the lightness because you have no more the gravity. La gravità scompare completamente. Allora, questo è interessante. Questo è uno stage che mi piace perché è un concetto e non è una forma. Tutto quello che è forma non me ne frega nulla. Cioè io proprio non sono interessato a me. Se il coltello me lo dai così o così o così, l'unica cosa deve essere comodo, ecco. Poi il resto non me ne frega nulla. Cioè la forma proprio è l'ultima cosa a cui si pensa. E credo che la mia generazione di buoni architetti ha lavorato per distruggere la forma. Come qualche cosa che era lontana da quello che chiamiamo emozione, sentimenti, ma anche lontana dal concetto. E abbiamo fatto, forse, abbiamo rubato al cinema, eh, abbiamo rubato anche molto all'arte contemporanea, eh, cercando di, di usare il concetto, di, di trasferire il concetto dentro l'architettura e lavorare in questo senso. Ma let's, let's riconsidere qualcosa che è stato detto because you linked architecture to science fiction and you mentioned uh, the Phantom Menace, you talked about Spielberg, and in between you mentioned Las Vegas because I've just been there a couple of weeks ago, I spent three days there, I saw some of the new buildings and uh, I lived in one of them and uh, The idea of architecture as it is sort of um, displayed in Las Vegas, and Las Vegas is the biggest uh, growing city in America. 
uh, it's scary how fast it is growing. And each time you come, there is new hotels and new buildings. And there is one idea of architecture that you can study really very well in Las Vegas, better than anywhere in the world. And that architecture is really totally comparable to American science fiction movies. And it's, I think, the same idea in both. Like somebody said a few years ago, I've seen the future and it's a theme park. And that idea has become reality in Las Vegas. Everything is fake. Architecture is fake. If you live in the Venetian, you come to breakfast in the morning and it's crepuscule. It's, um, it's um, the light of late summer uh, evening, if you have breakfast. <laughs> Actually, all day it is evening when you live inside because it's a, you have the uh, Piazza San Marco and you have your breakfast there and you feel it's late in the day, and then you, after a while you realize what it makes, the effect it has, everybody wants to spend money because it's already evening and they haven't bought anything. <laughs> so they go into all the shopping malls and spend their money. The whole architecture in Las Vegas is, for me, my definition of Dante's Inferno. <laughs> it, is, it, it is made... It is completely fake. There's no emotion. Everything is like in American movies. You don't believe it anymore, but you feel you have to believe it. You feel you have to spend your money because the entire idea of the architecture is to have people stay inside, not see daylight, not know if it's day or night, not know what life is, just spend your money. And that's my nightmare of architecture. And it's also my nightmare of movies. And that's why I think that science fiction, the American idea of science fiction is so utterly different, like you mentioned Kubrick. 2001, today, even today, 40 years later, it's a science fiction film that far surpasses anything that any American movie has ever imagined. It is, and it also so beautifully, I come back to my one idea, you know, I had one, so I have to make the most of it. <laughs> That, can that, I use your idea? Yes, yes, please. <laughs> we can have one that more. film so For beautifully di displays the idea that you, if you leave space in between. And Star Wars, I've seen it in um, 2001. I've seen it 20 times, and each time I see a new movie, I, see, I have different ideas. I see the future, but in a different ways. It leaves incredible space for people to dream themselves in there. I mean, Kubrick was, it's a, I mean, such a magician and such an incredible master of imagination. Because, I mean, even if I so see it today, I can still see it as if it was the first time. Once you've seen Star Wars, you don't have to see it again because it's wall to wall. It's like Las Vegas. You, what you see is what you get. And you, you, you're made to believe something that in the end, when you put your, if once you, you put your head out of a window, if you could open them, because you can't, you, of course you can't open them, and you, you, you feel the sticky air outside full of the, uh, the exhaust of the air conditioning, you just want to get out of there because you realize it is hell. It is as hot as hell as well. So I think the idea of architecture as it is shown, American architecture as it's exemplary in Las Vegas is exactly the same idea as those movies that close your imagination. So I'm happy to see a European architect who's referring to Kubrick. Thank you. Diceva prima Fuchs, della forma mi interessa veramente poco, mi interessano altre cose, funzionalità, eccetera. Ecco, forse questo è qualcosa che video, cambia leggermente il rapporto fra l'identità, fra cinema e architettura, perché io credo, e sto parlando adesso più a Lenders che a Fuxas naturalmente, credo che forse la forma nel cinema ancora, ancora qualche, eh, qualche importanza ce l'abbia. It is of course important, but the most important thing, 
start to hear myself in Italian. <laughs> Out of a sudden, I could speak it. <laughs> the most important thing about form is that you make it invisible or that you, that you don't make it the object of admiration. But, I mean, form is, is there to create something else and to disappear as such. And, and of course, in, in, in movies, you have to deal with form all the time. Each time you put up your camera, you, you create some sort of shape with your frame, with your cadrage. And, and each scene consists of two, three, or 20 or 30 of shapes. And each, each of them is a little time capsule, and somehow you have to put it all together, like an architect, many rooms, and then you have a complete scene, and, and then you have to build another scene, and in the end you have to build a sort of city, which is your movie. And so that's what I meant. We, have all, we, we work a lot with shapes, and our main tool is time, in a way, as a filmmaker less than space. Space is something that is inside each frame. But the film is a construction in time. Quindi la forma come senso invisibile in un certo senso, il che eh, ci riporta di nuovo all'architettura a questo punto, perché la, la forma in questo senso penso che, eh, che anche lei l'accetti. No? Ma è la, la, la forma, è la cosa migliore della forma, come diceva Wenders, Wim Wenders, è quando scompare. Cioè, no, no, il problema è il rapporto fra visibile e invisibile. Eh, quello che vogliamo, cioè cerchiamo, è l'invisibile e non cerchiamo il visibile. Il visibile lo si vede ed è semplice ed è fatto, però è quel qualche cosa in più che è l'alchimia che poi, anche se succede qualunque disastro, poi ci sarà sempre un signore, qualcuno, una donna, un uomo che scriveranno tre righe e un altro le leggerà e piangerà e si commuoverà e alla fine è sempre così perciò c'è da avere solo speranza ringraziamo moltissimo Fuzza che deve scappare but he's totally right I mean as soon as the form imposes itself It's ugly. I would have wanted to ask him one thing, now it's too late. I have to email him. Because as a filmmaker, I know that in order for the building of this film to function, very often I have to give up on my favorite things. Very often you have to take away your favorite shots or sometimes even your favorite scene so that the entire thing works. I always wanted to ask an architect if they have to take out their favorite things so that the building works. Ah, it's too late. <laughs> Can we call him back? <laughs> And I know that if, if you draw attention to the form, I mean, people don't go to the movies to see form. They want to be touched, and form as such is not touching. On the other hand, if you're working without any forms, you're sort of disintegrate. And as he said, it is the main task is to make the visible invisible. When I started to make movies, I've, I thought film was only about the visible. I was totally convinced that I only dealt with things that were there. And anything that wasn't, inv wasn't visible, therefore, was excluded from the medium of cinema. And maybe architects start this way as well. They also, when they're young, believe that everything is stone and steel and glass. And only when I made a few movies, I realized that there was something much more precious than the visible. But it's a leap. I mean, it's quite a leap of faith to get there, to, to understand that the visible 
sort of you can shape it, but sometimes it produces something that is from the realm of the invisible. And out of a sudden you, you realize that the real magic of filmmaking is not to organize the vid visible, but to make the invisible appear behind. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes is, there is no recipe for that. And there, there, nobody tells you how to do it. And there is no storyboard and no actually no screenplay that can help you actually. The invisible has to appear by itself. And I think that's maybe the, the greatest secret that architects and filmmakers share and that maybe we should not even talk about. Because as soon as we, <laughs> as soon as we talk about it, that magic risk to evaporate so let's keep talking about the visible i feel safer okay <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, allora eh, ritorno ancora indietro una volta uh, proprio all'inizio all dell'incontro um, dell uh, uh, lei ha detto una cosa um, alquanto interessante uh, um, che il cinema è una uh, invenzione, come dire, cittadina, nel senso che è eh, usufruito, è, è goduto, forse anche necessario in qualche modo per la città. E mi piacerebbe eh, che si soffermassero un pochino di più sul perché il cinema è cittadino e, e non soltanto in temi architetturali evidentemente, architettonici che siano, ma eh, probabilmente anche da un punto di vista di costruzione e di fruizione. Well, the cities, if you look at them, are places where we mainly do our work and are places where we're very occupied. People, people are very busy in the cities these days and busier and busier and we have less and less time. I mean, all of us that live in cities know that cities steal our time in big way. We are stuck in traffic jams and we get home and have... 50 emails to do and we want to read a book where we never get to do it and we want to see friends but we don't have time and jobs are very demanding and you have to work overtime and I mean cities are places that are very demanding and get more and more demanding so our imagination and our idea of what the world outside of cities is like sort of needs needs new resources. Every now and then we have to be reminded why we're doing everything we're doing in the cities. And I think that's what cinema is doing. Cinema is, keeps reminding us of everything <laughs> we miss. <laughs> um, that's a new idea. I, I don't know. <laughs> that, just, that just came out like that. I don't know if it can be verified. Eh, sì, eh, credo di capire, ma <ride> però eh, eh, vorrei fare un'obiezione. Di quale cinema stiamo parlando? Perché se stiamo parlando di Guerre Stellari, lo posso dire adesso che non c'è Fux, se stiamo parlando di Guerre Stellari è una cosa, se stiamo parlando di un film di Wenders è un'altra. Eh, cioè c'è cinema e cinema, cinema intrattenitivo, quello senza spazi, eh, in mezzo, senza buchi diciamo, senza silenzi e via dicendo c'è quello invece che fa del, del, del buco, dello spazio del silenzio una parte attiva e fondamentale del film I think it's not a question of quality I think we should totally drop the idea of quality because quality exists in both realms there is quality entertainment and there is um, bad entertainment and there is quality um, the other cinema, I don't even know how to call it, that sort of tries to connect us with life. There is quality in that cinema and there's totally unqualified versions of that as well. I think um, there's great entertainment and there's great blockbusters and there's a lot of junk. 
And at the same time, in European films and in authors' films, there's also a lot of junk and and some good ones. So I think there's two different ideas of cinema. And uh, we should, uh, I think, it'd be too easy to to do to to say it's black and white and and uh, who needs Star Wars because we are, we do need that sort of entertainment. Or people in cities sometimes do need mindless films because sometimes that works the best in order to to just um, recharge your 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 brains. Yeah. And then there's the other kind of cinema that sort of it's more gentle and it's more where cinema is more like a form of expression that tries to remind us yeah for instance what we're missing or try to remind us sometimes what we're living for you can't take that sort of cinema all the time i mean sometimes everybody needs to go to see star wars but every now and then i think it's great that there's another kind of cinema that reminds us of reality and that opens windows that lead out of the city and out of that busy life that we're leading. So I think both are very justified. And from the very beginning of, of cinema, both ideas were present. Prima avete parlato di eh, spazi eh, pieni e di vuoti, no? Nei film, nei libri, eccetera, e anche nelle architetture. Eh, se pensiamo al pieno come a la vostra opera, quello che avete realizzato e se pensiamo ai vuoti come ai film mancati o ai progetti non realizzati anche in questo caso si può dire che i vuoti abbiano un valore importante um, it is true that most of filmmaking is to decide what not to do and, and uh, of the 20 films that I have in my head right now, I know I can only make one. But sometimes the ones that you can make sort of continue to live. And sometimes you can just draw from a film that you never made, maybe just for one scene or for just one shot. It's not very enlightening as an answer. <laughs> Uh, you see, because already I have a trouble to I have trouble to answer the question because when you said I should look at these films as full, but I just consider these films as what I'm proud of is the emptiness in them. So I don't consider my films as full. I consider them as leaving lots of holes, as much as many holes as possible, because the holes in them is is my real work. Everything I don't say and don't show in a film is really more important. The rest is construction, architecture. Grazie, 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 grazie veramente. Grazie.